Hello everyone, welcome to an empties video. This is an episode where I talk to you all about what's in my trash bin. Actually, well, they're not trash yet. I've done using them down to the last drops. Um, a few of them are so mysterious and pointless that I can't really use up. And um, I've decided just to let them go. But mostly, this is a video about a lot of different products I've been using and what I think about them, would I buy them again, how I feel about them after using the whole bottle, things like that. So get comfortable and let's start talking about one of my favorite products and I thought we would start on a good note and this is the Body Shop Body Butter in the Cocoa Butter Formulation. That's a lot of butters. Um, I love this. I think this is by far the best body butter from the Body Shop that I've ever used. Someone should make a tongue twister on this. Body Butter by the Body Shop. And um, I like this because it's multi-purpose. I find it great for dry heels, elbows, as well as the rest of my skin. I love the scent of it. It's lightly scented with cocoa butter. It's, it's not heavy or overwhelmingly rich. I've used a few of the fruity variations from the body shop and I just found it to be too strong. And the scent lingered and sometimes it interfered with my uh, fragrance or whatever I happen to be wearing. So this one I find it's subtle enough that I can um, layer other things on top of it but it's still kind of there that you can smell it and it feels very soothing and luxurious. Not to mention, I like the consistency. It's a denser formulation, but it melts so nicely onto the skin and I just enjoy this very, very much from um, the body shop right here. Next thing, let's talk about a very popular product that I had a lot of high expectations for, but I don't think it really lived up to all the hype or maybe I just had too high you know, expectations for this and that is the Shiseido Subaki Hair Care Line. Now the white bottles are the repair variation I believe. I've also used the original red bottles before and it was okay. And then I tried this one which by the way is the conditioner. It's okay again. I mean I think it's better than the red version, the original, um, but it wasn't like wow it didn't make me feel like I'm gonna you know get another bottle. I don't think I'm gonna repurchase this again. It's just a kind of a mediocre good product. It wasn't terrible but it wasn't you know blow my socks off either and uh, for the price that you pay for this because it is imported from Japan I don't think it's really worthwhile and hasn't worked any miracles on my hair. Um, in the same realm if I was looking for something super nourishing, repairing, if I you know was back to my colored hair and whatnot I would still go back to my Joyco K-Pack that works for me every single time. Now the next thing I want to mention or actually two things together are nail treatment products and I've kind of gone to the last bits of both and I, it's been hard to get out the last little bit of product in here. So I'm going to just throw them in here as well. And these are from, first off, um, OPI. This is the Nail Envy Nail Strengthener from OPI. And this one is from Nail Teak called Nail Protein. And this is formula number two, if you can see that. So these two, I've used both um, on and off. And I originally thought maybe I could find something better than Nail Envy so I went to Nail Teak because this was also a popular um, product but I think Nail Envy is still a bit better for me. I find that it does help my nails grow longer and faster, a little bit stronger but I wouldn't necessarily say the OPI was very moisturizing for my nails. My nails do tend to get brittle and I'm kind of dry either just from nutrition or from, you know, doing the dishes without gloves or, you know, things like that around the house. Um, yeah, I still think Nail Envy is the better choice. The Nail Tea didn't do much for me. And I also found that it peeled very easily once you start layering a few layers you know, throughout the day or the week um, as you're supposed to use it as a treatment over a period of time, it started peeling off my nails and it didn't quite make any sense. I mean, it did make my nails grow um, a little thicker and stronger, but I think overall OPI is still the winner for me and I look forward to buying another bottle of the Nail Envy. Now, the next thing is something that is still kind of full, but I can't finish using this because I just found it to be kind of terrible, really. And this is the Pantene Fine Hair Volumizing Hairspray in the big, big bottle. I remember, and I hope you guys know too, and if you do, leave me a comment just to make sure I'm not crazy. Um, there used to be a Pantene hairspray in the white bottle that was for volume or for fine hair or something like that, and that was brilliant. It was a fine mist. It smelled wonderful. Um, the spray pump right here dispensed a good even amount of hairspray. It was a light hold. It was just 
it was perfect. It was a perfect light, soft hairspray. I don't know what happened to this. This was terrible. Since Pantene reformulated their line into fine hair, thick hair, curly hair, they messed up a few things. And I really wish they would bring back that old hairspray and the white bottle. I thought that was really nice. And when I um, saw this one after they had revamped the line, I thought this would be the same, but it wasn't. The spray dispensed product kind of in large droplets. It wasn't even. It was rather wet of a formulation and kind of weighed my hair down a bit. It just wasn't great. So I'm back to using the El Net Satin Hairspray, which I did like. Um, I just thought the Pantene one, you know, was an old favorite. I thought I'd go back to it, but this obviously was not it. And I really wouldn't recommend it for those who are looking for a similar hold to that old Pantene one in the white bottle. This is definitely not the same and not worth the money in my opinion. All right, next few products. Let's talk about something very luxurious, very expensive. Um, you know, along the lines of like, what, 60 or $50 for a little tub of maybe 40 milliliters is crazy. This is the Glam Glow Tingling and Exfoliating Mud Mask. Tiny little sample I had. This lasted me uh, maybe two applications, um, not all over my face, but in certain areas, you know, around the T-zone, around the inner cheeks and whatnot. This is an iffy product for me. Does it work? Yes, I think it does um, help to knock out a bit of redness. It really um, clears up your skin, gives your skin a bit of that glow. I love the little granules in here that really exfoliates your face nicely. And it's a nice pampering treatment. Is it worth the $50-$60? Questionable, because if I had $50-$60, I would probably spend that on good skincare. Therefore, I wouldn't need so much emergency treatment shall we say if you're looking for a gift for a friend um and you know to splurge on yourself or whatever i think this is still a good performing product but i'm not sure in an everyday basis just for yourself is it really worth that amount of money um the glam glow mud i have reviewed this again if you want further details you can check that one out Next thing is a drugstore product I actually really like and I look forward to repurchasing if I can find it again. It's hard to find Essence products um, in my shop, in my local shop or drug marts because they're not in every single um, SDM, only a few of them. And um, if I don't happen to be in the area, well, I don't get access to this one. But I think this is still a pretty good mascara called the Get Big Lashes. And I have this in the waterproof formulation as usual. This, like I mentioned before, the big, big brush is very similar, if not exactly identical to the Dior Show brush, the original, which I have used before. And um, I found this to be a great natural volumizing mascara. And I don't say that very often because I'm a girl that likes fake lashes. I mean, I'm wearing them right now. I'm wearing them in almost every single video. But if I am going out, I want something kind of um, more natural, but still gives that fluttery, um, separated, naturally voluminous look especially if you don't have that many eyelashes to begin with i think this is a great choice and a beautiful um sort of formulation when you first get it my only peeve with this is i find that it dries out a little bit quicker than my other mascaras even though it's waterproof i understand that but it still dries out a little quicker and i find that it tends to get flaky once it starts drying out and can um, get a little bit underneath your eyes and on your cheeks. But for the money, for what it does initially when you buy it, at least for a month or so, this is a great mascara and I would highly recommend this one. Especially the waterproof holds my curl quite well. All right, next moving on is the Dolly Wink Liquid Liner. I've talked about this in a few videos. I do really like this. I'm looking forward to repurchasing another one. I'm going to be trying out a similar brand in the brush type. I really was surprised by how much I like this because I wasn't sure about the fine brush tip. There's pretty much nothing in here anymore. I've used it for a long time. But I like the fact that this can give you very a um, detailed brush to do any touch-ups. I prefer to use a thicker felt brush for the outer wing, but I use this to fix up the inner corners, to fix up the tip of my you know cat eye flick or whatever. This is a great fine little brush, especially if you wear um, false eyelashes and you want to just fill in that tiny little spot you can't get to with um, anything else, a different eyeliner. This one would do the job and I find it to be a rich black formulation. I like this one a lot, the Dolly Wink um, liquid eyeliner. Alright, last thing I want to mention is this from L'Oreal and this is called the Lash Serum 
quite simply. I've been trying to find where they sell this and this is either getting pulled from the shelves or they've been selling out really quickly. Um, I can't find another tube of this and I really like this too. I've used a few of these drugstore level lash enhancing serums and products and I do find the L'Oreal one to be the best for my lashes that I've used. Obviously there are more expensive things like Latisse and you know, Rapid Lash but those are crazy expensive and I'm not sure I'm, I'm ready to spend that type of money for my lashes. I was more looking for something to condition my lashes because I do wear waterproof very often um, and just to help fill in any sparse spots and this did do that for me. I found my lashes not quite to be denser but to be a bit longer and any kind of emptier spots got filled in and lashes grew in through there so it looked much more even and it did make my lashes feel softer and it had um, a bit less I would say lash fallout whenever I curled my lashes. So overall I think this is still a very good product. I haven't been able to find it again. Um, let me know if you've seen it anywhere around town in Vancouver. I don't know um, but I do like this and I would definitely get this again and it's actually been in my kind of arsenal for a long long time, a couple of years already and I keep going back to this formulation. So this wraps up my empties video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Questions and comments, leave them down below. Let me know what you've used up, whether you liked it or didn't like it. If you want links or further details or reviews on any of these things I've just mentioned, if I have already done them, that will be linked in the information bar as well. So take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.